Hey guys, welcome back to Night One Videos. Today I am going to be playing with toy ponies. No, not really. Uh, the other day I was scrolling through Amazon and I saw this show jumping toy and I automatically thought, ooh, I could turn that into a Nazgul uh, Black Rider. So that's what I'm going to try and do. But I'm also going to try and put it inside a book nook light box. So I'm trying to combine different things, a bit of a kit bash on this, a light box effect, and yeah, turn that into a book nook. See if it all comes together. All right, let's get started. So the day has finally arrived. Uh, my channel has officially become a toys unboxing channel. Uh, not really, but yeah. Let's get this thing out of the box and see what we can do with it. Okay, here we go. I've got my prancing pony with rider. So this is my first ever book nook. Recently I've been enjoying a channel called North of the Border and he does some fantastic book nooks and made it look really fun so I had to have a go. Starting off here by carving up this toy rider I'm just making sure to be super careful not to cut myself. I cut off the arm so as to put it back on in an offensive sword attack position and when I glued it back on with super glue I used baking powder to make the joint more secure. There we go guys, um, that's the first part of the build done. The sword will be in the hand kind of like that. For the gauntlets I'm just going to cut away these cuffs and I'm going to use a bit of tin foil to wrap around like so and make more of a gauntlet shape. I'm not sure what kind of plastic these little toys are made of, but it is really easy to carve, almost too easy. One slip of the knife and you could chop off the hand by accident. Okay, my camera wasn't running, but you didn't miss out on much. Um, I have glued the tin foil on. I used a big, a bit of baking f uh, fo uh, powder in around the edges as well, just to make it a little more solid. And as you can see, I have scored some lines into the tin foil to make them look more like gauntlets. I've chopped off the nose to give it quite a featureless face just in case under the cloak you can see some of the face. I don't want it to have features. So it's got a skeletal kind of look to it, you see. But I'm just going to go ahead and paint it black. Woohoo! My first Black Mod Podge time-lapse of the video. It's actually pretty cool that I'm making a Nazgul because they have a very limited sense of fashion and opt for a wardrobe of purely black garb. Easy to paint for me. On to giving the horse some kind of face mask. Really, I don't have to do very much to this horse. I just want to give it like a spooky looking kind of face covering and some spikes on these uh, shin guards. I have cut out a little um, diamond of tin foil that I'm going to shape to the, the horse's face. And this is to figure out just exactly what shape I want to make my face covering for the horse and then I'm going to spread it out on cardstock and cut it out properly. And there we go. When this little horse arrived in the post from Amazon, I opened it in the kitchen in front of my daughter. Bad idea. I then spent the next 45 minutes trying to convince her that this was my toy, not hers, and ended up having to hide it. So I will have to buy her another one now. Okay, there we go. That's kind of cool. When this is all painted black and stuff, it's going to look even better, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Gluing this cardstock onto the horse's shin guards was harder than it should have been. I have big clumsy fingers and I think I used far too much glue and I was sticking to the horse more than the card was. Okay, it was quite fiddly to get all of that done. I've got super glue all over my hands. I even got super glue into the my cut on my thumb, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like my spiky little gauntlets on the front and I like my horse mask and now I'm just going to paint it all black. My horse and rider have both been painted all in black and I really like the armor on the horse, like the addition of the face guard 
and the gauntlets on his ankles I think look really good. So now I need to figure out what I'm going to do with the Black Rider in terms of a cloak coverings. Here is the big reveal on how I am going to do this, uh, how I'm going to do his cloak. Ta-da! A dried out baby wipe. I stuck some baby wipes on top of the radiator earlier on this afternoon. Uh, these are the wet ones, uh, water wipes, which basically don't have any chemicals in them. It's pretty much just water. So I'm not going to do any damage to my piece. I've seen this method of using a baby wipe and super glue as material once before on the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Someone used it as a tent. I can't remember your name, but thanks. It's a great tip. The reason why I couldn't talk there is because I took the lid off with my mouth. But yeah, this is this is what how I plan to do it. Once I've got a certain part held in a position that I like, I am going to put a dollop of super glue. It'll glue through the material and onto the fabric. And yeah, we'll build it up that way. I've seen other crafters kit bashing toys and making some awesome things. This kit bash is about as easy as it comes, so I've left a link in the description below to the horse toy so that anyone who wants to can have a shot for themselves. Okay, this guy's starting to look pretty cool. Currently he is a white Nazgul, but that's all going to change very soon. That's now super solid. The hood is super solid. Like, that's perfect. Right, we're going to attach it to the horse. Originally I planned to use wood glue on the baby wipe and only spot on super glue and key points to hold it in place. But once I saw how rigid it became, I decided to use the whole tube of super glue to make it really secure. It is impressive how easy it was to make the baby wipe look like material blowing in the wind. Too many fumes, I'm sitting back for a minute. I've run out of super glue um, for holding the the um, baby wipe in place, but to be quite honest, uh, it's probably done its job. I don't mind certain bits being a little bit loose, but look at that. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, the actual way it's holding over the face, that's really solid. That's That's hard, you know? It feels sculpted. So, very happy with that technique of super glue and a baby wipe. That's definitely going to come handy in the future. But it's actually really secure to the horse now as well. I glued the, the feet on both sides. So that's super secure. This is really starting to look like a Nazgul. Um, yeah, let's paint it black and see where we stand after it dries. Check that out. Oh my goodness. I'm very, 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 very happy with that. I've successfully turned a child's toy, show jumping pony, into a badass Nazgul. The next thing I need to do is make him a tiny sword. And I picked up a tip off RP Archive about making swords out of a comb. So I'm going to try and do that. So to make this more secure, I've got some baking powder and I'm going to put some super glue in around the joint and dip it in the baking powder. And that should make that joint way more solid, which it has done. Okay, so I've got my little sword. Um, it doesn't look perfect or anything, but within the context of this piece, it is going to be totally fine. Dab of glue in the rider's hand. The sword goes in the hand like so. That looks pretty cool. And now to finish off, uh, I'm going to just put a little bit of baking powder in there just to solidify around the edges. There we go, that's not going anywhere. 
Okay, so I've just done a quick test run on this metallic silver that I have. Um, once I've got it on, all the armor, I'm probably going to go back and do a black wash over the top of it just so it's not so silvery. But this is what I'm going to use. Oh, I think that looks so cool. And that is my Black Rider finished. On to the next stage of my build. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that I am attempting to combine some techniques with this build and make it a part book nook, part paper cut light box. Using Photoshop in grayscale, increasing the contrast and playing with the brightness of an image is a great way to create silhouettes. There are also some really handy brush tools to automatically create repeated shapes such as leaves and grass. Okay. So, I've been messing around in Photoshop, um, building up my layers for my light box effect. Um, obviously, the back layer is just going to be a plain white layer, and I'm going to project the light behind that so there will be a diffused light effect coming through. Then the next layer, I'm going for a mountain range, like so. The next layer, I'm going for Baradur and Mount Doom. Then the next layer I'm going for one level of forest, like so. And the last layer is another layer of forest, like so. And then the plan is to build another maybe five or six inches in front of that box with actual uh, trees and foliage and a black rider that's going to come binding out, like so. I don't know if you can really see that, the lighting in here is not very good, but yeah, the Black Rider will be kind of jumping out of the screen like so, with the light behind it. That's the idea, we'll see if we can actually make it work. My task for tonight is cutting, cutting and more cutting. Um, because I'm not very good at Photoshop, I don't know how to print these images just as outlines. So I've printed the silhouettes, I'm going to cut them out and then I'm going to draw around them onto the card that I'm going to use in the light box and then I'm going to cut them out again. This was definitely the most tedious part of the whole entire build but it was a good opportunity to sit and do a mindless task and have the Lord of the Rings playing in the background again. If anyone out there is interested in having a go at this paper cut light box, I do still have all the image files stored on my computer. If you would like to get a hold of them, just leave a comment below and I will figure out a way to make them available. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces that I printed on paper cut out and now I am going to trace around them onto card. Um, so this is 210 GSM in terms of thickness in case you're wondering. And yeah, the idea is that the light will still shine through it, but it will create a darker shadow than just regular paper. So that's what I want. You can see that the light comes through. Yeah, so 210 GSM, and now I have to trace around everything onto these pieces of card. And that's what I'm gonna do next. So in the background of my light box, I am using some of the most iconic imagery from the Lord of the Rings, Barad Dur Fortress. This is the stronghold of the Dark Lord Sauron, a powerful being who is intent on enslaving Middle-earth with malice and destruction. Sauron gave nine rings of power to the race of men, kings of old, and through the power of the one ring which he possessed, he bent them to his will and in time they became ring wraiths, the Nazgul. Okay, I've got all of my card cut um, for the silhouettes. And now the next thing that I need to do is to cut little frames for those to sit in. And to do that, I am going to use foam core foam board. Um, it's quite thin. Uh, that's about three millimeters thick foam core board. And yeah, I'm just gonna measure out four little frames that are exactly the same size and then stick those these bits onto their frames. Okay, there we go. That's my little frame uh, that I'm going to be sticking each piece to, like so. Uh, the reason why I cut the frames like that is because I didn't want to have to glue lots of little strips on 
and I can use this foam core for something else at a later date. I've got lots of handy little bits of foam core here, so bricks, buildings, who knows. Yeah, I can use all of that. All of my pieces are glued. Um, I'm not sure about this middle section, I might cut that away. We'll see. Uh, I haven't decided yet. But all of my, the pieces are glued individually to their own little sheets. I haven't glued them together yet because I might still make some adjustments to the actual designs on the paper. Um, but I have done a quick mock-up of my diorama just in cardboard. This is not going to be the book nook. It's just so I can see how things look. So I'm going to turn off all the kitchen lights and then I'm going to turn on my phone torch and set it on the table. La la la. And let's see what happens. <gasps> oh, that's cool. Okay. Really liking that. Um so obviously I don't want white light behind it. I want it to be a red or an orange light to make it more spooky looking. I might remove that middle section of, uh, oops, it's all falling in. I might remove this middle section. And I think I want some light to come up underneath the mountains and the Baradur uh, thing. So I'm going to have to cut some card away along the bottom on the mountains and on the Baradour one so that the light bleeds out from underneath as well. But, hey, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Okay, so last week, gladly, I did the TARDIS build and I still have some pieces of my plywood left, which is why I'm going to build the book nook out of. The measurement across the bottom here is 14.85 centimeters, and the measurement to the top is 23 centimeters. Now, uh, in terms of the base of the piece and the height of the piece, I'm actually gonna add six millimeters to that because whenever I cut my wood, I'm gonna stick it together and we're gonna lose three millimeters on either side. I have done a taper on my edge all the way down on all of my sides that I'm going to be gluing together and they're gonna glue really nicely together. I have cut a piece of XPS foam which will be going inside. This will be part of the terrain. I'm gonna build a bit of terrain at the front and then the light box aspect of the build will be behind that XPS foam like so. We need to find out where we're going to place my horse. So I kind of want it that the horse is kind of jumping out of the diorama. So I'm thinking about there. It's really nice to be making some actual terrain as part of this build. And of course I'm carving some XPS foam as usual. It's not a very large piece of terrain, but as anyone who has made scattered terrain before will know, a small piece of terrain can go a long way to draw your imagination into the setting of a story. As you can see, I have glued in my piece of XPS foam and I have glued one side on. It's just gonna make things a lot easier to work with. So I have the holes drilled, drilled into the hooves and I have these dial plugs that I have carved the tops off and these are going to go down into my holes like so. I'll glue them in with hot glue and then I will create some holes in my XPS foam and that will glue down in. Awesome, so yeah, that's all glued in and those dials now hold extremely strong and whenever they get glued down into the um, 
XPS foam, it will be grit. I wanted to make it look like the Nazgul was in hot pursuit of the hobbits, like the clip at the start of this video. So to get as much action into the diorama as possible, I decided to have him jumping out over some old ruins that had been overgrown in the middle of the deep dark forest. Okay, we're getting there now. Um, pretty happy with the composition, pretty happy with the trees and stuff. It's hard to get more in without, I don't know, overkilling it. So I'm gonna give it a, a coat of black Mod Podge inside um, all the way. And yeah, I'm gonna take the horse out while I do that. Um, because I still have one more thing to do on the horse before I can call it finished. Okay, there we go. Uh, in, inside coat all done. Um, I will paint the rest of this as well at some point. But right now I need to let that dry and then I want to go now and finish the horse which is to do the horse's mane. Okay, so this is one of those uh, really hope I don't mess this up moments. So I showed my friend Beck Elliott um, my horse and Black Rider and everything. She said it's really, really good. There's just one thing is that the the knot, the top knot on the top of the head is just too recognizable as a show jumping pony. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and come up with some kind of a mane. And what I've come up with is I've got this piece of nylon which has been cut off my shoulder bag and yeah I frayed the ends and this is going to become the mane so basically the idea is I'm just going to put some hot glue on the top cut this and stick it in and hopefully it works The next day. Uh, I've been doing some work this morning and I wasn't able to film it. Um, I have put the lid on the box, um, glued on the top, and I've also painted the whole of the interior and all the sides, two coats on the outside. So I've done two tester strips of colors uh, that I was thinking of doing on the outside of the box. Uh, this is red oxide and this is crimson red and yeah I think I'm just gonna go for the crimson red going for that dark nazgul danger kind of look I'm really pleased with the way the crimson red dry brushing looks over the black base coat for some reason this combination gives a slightly sinister feel which really suits the project there we go all done I'm wondering if whenever I look at this on my laptop the footage will look different because in my hands, it looks a lot redder than it does on my camera screen. But I like it anyway. I mean, even I, I like this color anyway, even through the camera. Okay, my painting process. For my stonework in the top left, I started with a base coat of graphite gray, moving on to neutral gray, then neutral gray and titanium white mixed for highlights. For the trees and dirt top right, I used burnt umber as a base coat and then mixed the burnt umber with white and a little grey for dry brushing finish. Then my green areas bottom left, I used emerald green and lemon yellow mixed for the base coat. Finally, a lime green for the highlights in the bottom right. So I've done all of my painting. Now that's really, really green and quite vibrant. Um, but I did that deliberately because there's going to be red light coming from behind it and it should neutralize it out a little bit and also the flocking um, will change the color a bit so yeah just going to do some flocking now flocking is probably my favorite part of building terrain now adding a little PVA glue and sprinkling on some grass flock transforms and lifts any piece of terrain to another level the flocking's all dry and in place. Um, I probably put on a little bit more than I needed, uh, but I decided to keep it because, yeah, it's old overgrown forest with ruins in the middle. It's supposed to be overgrown. So um, I'm going to put on my clump foliage. I am going to put a link to where I get my clump foliage and my flocking in the description below. I used to make my own, but this has been more time and cost effective. I used to sit and cut hemp string for hours. So just to say that instead of using my PVA, I'm using the hot glue gun for the sake of speed. But uh, you do get these little wisps which can be annoying. Um, 
but it still looks really good. So yeah, hot glue wisps are probably the bane of any crafter's life. You can't see it in the footage, but I had wisps everywhere, which I then had to pick out after. All of my clump foliage is done. Time to glue my Nazgul into the project. I have got my dial rods glued, drilled and glued into the horse's feet. And they're really solid. And I've got two holes that I drilled into the project earlier on. And I'm going to basically fill those holes up with hot glue. I'm going to place the Nazgul into the holes and hold it in position uh, that I like until it goes hard. And then there was light. Bing! So I've got this LED light strip and I want to work it into the project. Um, I want to have some lighting at the front and I want to have some lighting at the back. So that's what we're going to do next. Just wanted to give a shout out to my friend Daniel West who gave me advice on the lighting. In stage shows they use a thing called barn doors which force the direction of the light. I use this concept with clump foliage. So I want to only have some lights at the front and then a gap with no lights down the back and then lights at the back. So I'm going to paint over the bulbs that I do want to be engaged with black Mod Podge to, to make them go black. I'm also going to paint over them in black again and I'm going to put fl flocking over any exposed wiring that's in the inside of this. So you won't see any um, exposed wiring, you'll just see some ambient light at the front and then the light coming up from the back of the project. Now it's start time to start fitting um, my paper cut light box bit to the back of the project. So we're rapidly approaching the end of the build now. Thank you so much for watching the whole way through if you made it this far. If you have enjoyed this video then please help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe and leave a comment to appease the almighty algorithm. Comments and interactions on the video help me to push this content out to more viewers on YouTube. I upload a new video every week and I try to keep my content as varied and entertaining for you guys as possible. Also please check out some of my other videos which you may also enjoy. Okay, let's finish this thing off. Okay, so even though this is a book nook, um, I want it to look nice as a standalone piece uh, from the sides. So I've decided to do some gold leafing on the sides. And on this side, I'm doing the Mask of Sauron. And on the other side, I am going to do a silhouette of Mordor as well. I've got some nice gold leaf. And I'm just going to apply it now because this has been drying for about 15 minutes. Okay, <clears throat> so it hasn't come out perfectly, but it has come out kind of cool. I like it. Um, yeah, very satisfied with that. Nice gold Eye of Sauron on the side of my box. Uh, or sorry, Mask of Sauron. Uh, you'll see the other side whenever I do the reveal at the end of the video, which is pretty much the next thing that's going to happen.